In this video, we're gonna show you how to remove and replace front brakes on a Toyota 4Runner. Remove the tire. It's a 21 millimeter socket. On the front brakes, I like to take this anti-rattle clip off and get it out of the way. And you'll see why. This Toyota does this nice thing where you can pull the pins out, get the pads out, and then you can take the whole caliper by itself out without doing anything. But now with that anti-rattle clip out of the way, I can take my pad spreader, which is gonna push those pistons back because it's four pistons. So we wanna get this as even as possible. So I'm gonna put that right in there, use the old pads, and I'm gonna put some pressure on them. And before I continue going, I'm gonna take my bleeder screw off. And I have a catch pan down below, 10 millimeter wrench, and I am going to just break that open just enough. On cars with ABS systems, I do not like pushing the fluid back. I have seen damage being formed to ABS modules. Personally, I don't wanna do that. So it's just as easy to open that bleeder screw. No air is gonna get back in, and all we have to do is gravity bleed after. And you're looking for all four pistons to seat themselves perfectly. So now just to get it to make sure it's the final stage, we don't care about the rotor or the pads, right? Because we're replacing them. Just gonna give that last little push and then do the same on this side. But when I hold it out to the final push, see how much further we got? Now I'm gonna block, cut this off. Make sure I don't suck any air back in. Now we're good to go. We're gonna take the pins out and then take the pads out. So I just use a little pair of cutters. I don't get rid of the equipment because I might need to use it again. This just holds those pins in place instead of uh, little safety pins. They used to use like a cotter pin back in the day. Now they don't do that anymore. So just take it, tap these. These are the pad pins. They hold the pads right inside that caliper. There we go. Sometimes the brake dust is so built up on them that it stops them from coming out too smoothly. And I can just grab that, work it back and forth to get that dust off. You see that brake dust that came right off? We will clean those up. Unless yours are bent, you can use the old ones just by cleaning them up. If they are bent, you're gonna need to replace them. Now like this, see how they're... There's all sorts of rust in there. So now I'm gonna get a punch and a small hammer. I'm just gonna to try to tap that all the way through. I'm just gonna give it some parts cleaner just to see if we can help it along because we don't care, right? We're replacing it, but we're not gonna lube it up. So before you remove the anti-rattle clip, this is a key. A lot of people do it so quickly they don't pay attention. Look at how this sits. See how the closure part is closest to the rotor? It's not on the outside. Some people take these off and then they go, oh yeah, this is right. And when they put it back together, they put it like this, and then that ends up going in and riding on that rotor. Proper way is for this V part to be facing away from the rotor. Let's remove the inner pad. Once again, noting where that indicator is. Setting that aside. And let's slide the outer pad out. So before we dismount this caliper, you wanna dismount the caliper line. The steel line going to the flex hose because you'll have no movement of this caliper. 
So 12 millimeter socket, and we're gonna take that bracket off that knuckle. Set it aside, and now we can just break that free, and we'll now disconnect the caliper to knuckle bolts. There's two of them right here, and that's a 19 millimeter socket. Okay, I'm gonna do the lower one first. And now the upper. I'm gonna hold on to that caliper because it will slide right down. And there it is. Let all that dirt shake it out of there. And I'm definitely gonna use a caliper hook. Grab it, set it up so that you can hang it right. Doesn't matter as long as it doesn't strain that flex hose or that steel line. Now the caliper's off, we can grab our rotor and just pull it right off the hub. So now I'm gonna clean this hub up from all this rust. You can use a wire brush or sandpaper. I like to lose, use my little cookies here. I don't recommend the green ones. Those are so, that's sanding and you can actually eat up the hub. So now I'm just gonna, after I've cleaned it up, I'm gonna use some parts cleaner. Get, make sure we get all of that little rust off. You can see it falling right off. Let that dry. So now I can put my copper high temp never seize or anti seize right on that hub. So the new surface meets with the new rotor and doesn't have any rust forming. I like to put two lug nuts on so it holds it in place. Just makes the uh, installation so much easier. Let's see if we can get away with one today. Perfect. So now the rotor is in place and I'm going to clean the surface, make sure I get any oils or anything packaging off and I can do the same from the other side. So I'll just go on the opening side and spray it and turn the wheel. Now to clean this caliper, I'm not gonna dismount it. So I'm gonna let it hang from my caliper hook, wire brush, and I'm cleaning up the flat surface that those pads are moving back and forth on. You wanna just make sure there's no rust buildup. Just get it nice and clean. Use sandpaper if you want, use a sandpaper block. And you wanna get all that rust out. Top and the bottom. And then obviously clean it after with some parts cleaner. Make sure you get all that brake dust out of there. So now that we've cleaned off the surface with a brake pad sit on that caliper, I cleaned it. I'm gonna spray it with a little copper, never sees. Once again, just a light coat, both sides. You can brush it on if you want. If you get any on the rotor, clean it up. Strongly advise it. So it wouldn't hurt to just take some parts clean and ride, spray the back of that rotor, spin it around. Make sure there's nothing on there. Now we're ready to mount that, calip that caliper to the bracket. So I'm gonna grab my two mounting bolts, take it off that caliper bracket, line this up. Always start them by hand. Make sure they start really nice. I'm gonna grab that bolt for that hose put that in too. I'm going to tighten that down. That's a 12 millimeter socket. Those two mounting bolts are 19. So we're going to snug them down, then we'll torque them to the factory spec. Now 
Now with a solid socket, deep socket, 137 foot-pounds. We're going to torque the caliper mounting bolts to knuckle. 137 foot-pounds. So now we have our front pads and we matched up the inner pad to have the indicator on the bottom. So we're just going to slide that right in like that. Pull it right back up, make sure it lines up. And then we're going to put the outer pad. Note that these pads come with shims already mounted on them. You want to always get pads that have shims on them. It's the best way for performance. Now we're gonna go clean up our sliding pins and install them. So I have a wire wheel brush and I'm gonna set it up so that I can clean the caliper pins. You wanna get all of that brake grime off of there. You can use sandpaper, anything you can get to, but you want that pin to get all that grime right off. Now that we've cleaned our pins up, examine them, make sure there's no pitting, no half a pin, and make sure they're not bent. Look at them, make sure they're nice and straight. If they are, you need to replace them. Basically, you can mount the top one straight all the way through. Now the bottom one, you've got to get the new hardware or use your old one if it's still in good enough shape, but our pads come with the new butterfly clip. Remember what I was saying, that you want that clip to face outward from that rotor, not inward. So, that being said, put the bottom part in, take your pin, slide it through, right out through to the other side, let it bottom out. Now you'll see that's facing outward. You're gonna take the anti-rattle clip, bring it in, push it right into that little hole that the pad comes with. But you're gonna make sure that this clip part of it is on top of that pad, just like that, on both sides. You might have to manipulate that metal just a little bit. It's because it's spring-loaded. Maybe you can get a pair of pliers and help yourself out. Just like that. Make sure they're seated all the way in. So now the pin that holds these pins in, the little lock pins, this is the factory style. Aftermarket comes like this. They work just as good. If this is somewhat damaged, you can always use these or just use these anyways. It's up to you. Or you can use the old one if it's still in good shape. I'm going to show you how to use the new one. So you're going to line a hole up. I'd put it perpendicular like noon and six. Push down. Make sure that that clip is in that lock position. Do the same to top and bottom. Feel it click and lock in, and there you go. So now that you've done one side of the brakes, do the same to the other. Once the other side is done, you're gonna pump up the brakes. Make sure your bleeder screws are closed completely. Check your master cylinder. The cover will tell you whether it's DOT3 or 4 or any other type of fluid. Top it off, put the cap back on, pump your brakes up. When these pads are seated, you're gonna gravity bleed. You're gonna open the furthest bleeder away over here on the, the passenger side, open this bleeder and just let it gravity bleed. Make sure there's no air in it. Lock it, close it up, and then go to the other side and do the same thing. Now that we're all done with the brakes, before we gravity bleed or pump the brakes up, we've opened the hood and we located the master cylinder. It's in the engine compartment right in front of the driver's seat. So we're gonna take that cap off and we're gonna see what type of brake fluid it takes. So we can see that it says dot three. I got it right here. Only dot three or dot four. So you can use both and uh, we're gonna top that off so we can pump the brakes up. So you wanna make sure you fill that master right up to the fill line. Might go a little bit over because I am gonna continue gravity bleeding the brakes. So I'm gonna pump, I'm gonna put it right up in there so now I can pump up the brakes. Make sure you put that cover on. And now that you've topped off the master, filled it with brake fluid, put the cover back on, you can gravity bleed your front brakes, open up the bleeder screw, and we're just gonna let that sit for a couple of minutes. We have that catch basin on below, and we're gonna let all that air come right out. Could take a couple of minutes, and what you're gonna be looking for is a steady stream. Could be a little bit more challenging with a four piston caliper. 
but because you should never have really got any air in there, you just opened it to push the pistons back. Should be pretty much a fast deal. We've already got a solid stream. So with my 10 millimeter wrench, I'm just gonna close it up. Make sure it's nice and snug. Take some parts cleaner. We're gonna clean that up. And don't forget to put the boot back on. That keeps all the dirt and debris out of that bleeder screw for the future. Do the same to the other side. So now you've gravity bled all the wheels. We're gonna press the brake and start the vehicle up and see how the pedal feels. That is perfect, it's right there. That's a solid brake pedal. Much better than it was when it came in because the pads were worn down. And what you wanna do is a quick test. Hold it and make sure it doesn't slowly seep down. If it does, then you're gonna have to gravity bleed again. You'll have air in the system. This brake pedal's nice and firm, so we're ready to go. So before I put the wheel back on, um, I like to take the center cap off. It's just easy to stop the lug nuts. So especially if you have uh, mag rims with a seated lug nuts. We will put this wheel back on. Grab your lug nuts. Now keep the wheel centered. You might have to lift it up a little bit. Hold it there and start your lug nuts by hand. I'm gonna put one right in so that that shank seats in that rim. As you can see, they have what we call a shank. It's not an acorn style. We put two opposite of each other with that started. There's no chance of that rim moving. Being aluminum, you don't want to crush them. Now you can hand start the rest. Now get your 21 millimeter socket. And just snug them up. Always going to crisscross pattern. It's like a star form. And now we can lower it and torque it to the factory specs. So now we can torque our wheel with our 21 millimeter socket. The wheel torque is 76 foot pounds, and that is for alloy aluminum rims. Steel is a different torque. So we're gonna start and do it in a star pattern, 76 foot pounds. Double check. And now we can put our center cap. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.